it's Shannon. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, please hit that subscribe button because you'll find new DIYs, tutorials, and new inspiration here every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now I am actually down in my woodworking shop to get started with this project. However, I will give you some options where you don't necessarily need a bunch of tools on hand to create this project. So let's go ahead and get started. Now this is what I'm gonna be using for my project today. This is a scrap one by six that I had on hand. So basically it really measures about five and a half inches wide instead of six inches wide. And I'm gonna cut mine down to nine inches tall. Now of course you can make this project bigger or smaller by purchasing different size wood or cutting it down to different sizes. But today mine is going to be uh, with a one by six cut down to nine inches long. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my 12 inch compound miter saw. I just need one simple cut to cut my 1x6 down to size. However, you can also purchase your lumber at the hardware store and take it over to their cutting station and they'd be happy to cut it down to size for you and save you this step. And now that I have my wood cut down to size, I need to sand it so that it's nice and smooth. I have an orbital sander here with 80 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna do the entire thing, making sure I don't miss the edges or the sides. And here's my piece of wood all sanded down smooth. And now I am going to stain mine. Of course, you could paint yours if you wanted, but I'm gonna be using this dark walnut color by Minwax. I also have a staining cloth, some rubber gloves to protect my hands, and I'm just gonna make sure I go with the grain of the wood, and then it really does need to sit overnight so that it can cure all the way. All right, and here's my board all stained. However, I wish I would have done this before I stained it. I wanna add some holes to the top because I'm gonna add some rope to the top. This is kind of an afterthought, but I was thinking, how do I wanna hang this? I don't really wanna hang it on the wall. If you wanna hang it on the wall, you can just put a sawtooth picture hanger on the back, but I kinda wanna hang mine with rope. So I'm just gonna use a 5 16 inch drill bit and drill a hole in each corner, and then I will add the rope after it's all dry. And now I'm upstairs so I can start working on finishing the piece of wood, which you can see is right here and beautiful. Uh, I have a few steps here I need to do to complete this. And the first thing I wanna do is work on these little uh, upholstery nails. I got these from Walmart, I believe. It comes in a pack of 30 and they're bright silver and I really don't want bright shiny for this because I'm going more for a rustic look. So what I wanna do is I have a scrap piece of wood, which is the same one you can see I use to drill the holes through. So what I'm gonna do is just hammer a few of them. Actually, I think I'm gonna do 10. I think I'm gonna do one in each corner and then two on each sides and two on the bottom so that it holds my fabric on. Uh, so I need 10 of them. So I'm gonna hammer them just a little bit down into the wood, and then I'm gonna paint them with some gray chalk paint. That'll tone them down a lot, and give them more of a rustic look. I'm gonna be using chalk paint by Waverly in the color Elephant. So I'm gonna get started with that and let that dry, and then we'll come back and work on the fabric. Now while the tacks are drying, I can work on the fabric. So I have drop cloth here. This is original 
drop cloth. It's just been washed so it's nice and soft. And this is bleached drop cloth. So you can see the difference in the color. I have a tutorial on how to bleach drop cloth. So if you want to do that, you can check out that link down in the description box below. I think I'm going to go ahead and go with the original colored uh, drop cloth just because I feel like it kind of blends a little bit better with the stained, but maybe for your project, the bleached would look better. So totally up to you. You could even use patterned or printed fabric. But now what I need to do is cut it down to size. I'm just going to lay this on top of the drop cloth, trace it, cut it out. I'm probably going to make it about five inches tall. We want to leave some of this open at the top. And then I'm gonna give it a grain sack print so I have my gray chalk paint out again. But before I get to that, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this fabric down to size first. And now I'm gonna add a grain sack print to the front. It's really simple. I just have some painter's tape for that. And it's sort of a two-part process, so I'll let you watch as I create that. All right, so my pieces are all dry now. I just took a hair dryer to them and made them dry a lot more quickly. And now I can lay my fabric on top of the wood. And I'm gonna use the same technique. I'm gonna use a little pair of needle nose pliers and add my tacks to the four corners. I just have a tack hammer. Just hold them with your needle nose pliers and hammer them down securely into the wood. And now that the fabric is all secured on here, I can add the rope. This is just nautical rope from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna feed it from the back through the front. I'm gonna tie a knot in the front and it'll be ready to go. Thanks so much for joining me for today's tutorial. I hope that it inspired you. Please take a second and give this video a thumbs up for me. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, you can click the bubble that you see on your screen. I'll also put a playlist to more woodworking DIYs. And make sure to come find me on Facebook and on Instagram for more inspiration. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.